Bonjour à tous. Que vous soyez en présentiel ou en distanciel, je suis ravie. Good morning. Whether you're here in presence or at a distance, I'm happy to welcome you here for this workshop, media workshop. We're here to reflect on the new strategies and tools to strengthen communication on climate issues for public and decision makers. The International Forum for Weather and Climate has had the excellent idea of linking up the first day of summer with uh, the Warming, Warming Stripes campaign by Ed Hawkins. If you look at the heat wave in France and a large part of the Mediterranean for several days joins us in uh, giving us uh, the need to act now. Let me give you the uh, ha housekeeping instructions for today for this workshop today you will have simultaneous interpretation in French and English you can follow the uh, discussions in the language of your choice directly via the video window you have under the window all of the necessary instructions now during thanks to this interface you can ask questions through the chat indicating your name of course if the chat window does not appear correctly, you can go on slido.com, enter the name of the event, hashtag FIMC2022, F-I-M-C2022, and send your questions. You can find all of these instructions on the streaming page. All day long, you can follow the live tweet at forum a forum meteo clima for the key messages of the speakers and don't hesitate to tweet with the hashtag FIMC2022. I'd like to thank Philip Bestis, the president of the space, National Center for Space Studies, who's welcoming us today for the 19th work media, uh, media workshop. Uh, and I invite Laurence Benoit-Smith, the Director for Sustainable Development at CNES, and then Jean Jouzel, President of Météo and Climat. Laurence, you have the floor. Thank you very much for being with us, especially for those who are following us uh, from afar on our on your computers. On the name of Fidi Batiste and the CNES, we're delighted to host this uh, media workshop on communica international communication on climate change in the media. This is a subject which is extremely topical today. We're delighted to welcome the prestigious guests who will take the floor today. We are quite sure that these exchanges will are closing the work that you have carried out in the weather and uh, meteorology forum since May. We, uh, you are absolutely right when you say that the subject is very topical. You know that France in particular has suffered a heat wave all week, as have other parts of Europe. This has led to a number of positions adopted on the social media. In France, we have heard on a channel which did not uh, accustom us to its uh, uh, positions on uh, the subject, we heard Mark A. say in his uh, weather uh, forecast a very, uh, very strong approach to these issues. In the past, there have been a number of weather forecasters who have adopted very strong positions, like Evelyn Delia, in, uh, uh, who has said that reality has gone beyond fiction. We no longer talk of nice or bad weather on French channels anymore. So other events such as this have shown that there is a growing awareness of this problem. Having said this, our meeting today calls upon us to go further. And you are going to be working here, highlighting various uh, issues to better communicate 
to uh, create greater awareness among the public at large on the subject of climate change. We have seen you are going to mobilize artists, uh, different types of data visualization. All of these are uh, measures to create greater awareness and reach out to the public at large. The Warming Stripes Initiative, which we all have on our badges, goes in that direction, and we can not help but support this. It is important to recall the urgency in which we find ourselves today. Collectively, we must be capable of increasing awareness without generating uh, any denial. We must work in a constructive manner. This reflection is welcome, especially the approach you are taking today. Now, in such an approach, what is the role of space? And this will be very present this morning. This is probably a link to the question of communication in a world of data supply, of mobilization in the favor of research, downstream applications, as will be presented by our colleagues of the ESA from the C3S service from Meteo France and Umitsat. All of us want to bear witness to what we see, what we understand, how we interpret this data. And this is the case of all of the organizations present today, like that of the CNES, whose uh, research laboratories with the CES, Brio, and others are contributing to the work of the IPCC. You know that uh, already among various publics like students, children, within the framework of the CNES mission, we work to disseminate information quite largely. And we will continue this within the framework of the of, uh, science uh, festival in October. But we can go further. We can do better. And your reflection today will certainly inspire us. Thus, it is a pleasure to host you here at the headquarters of the CNES as well as on a remote basis. We will be very attentive to all of your exchanges, which we hope will be extremely fruitful. Thank you. Thank you, Laurence. We are now going to welcome Jean Jouzel. Thank you, Marina. Good morning to everyone. Thank you, Laurence. Later in the morning, I will present the recommendations of a work group I chaired on the subject of uh, the teaching of ecological transition in higher education. This afternoon, we will have a symposium on climate adaptation, climate change adaptation. Everything we see this today is the linked to the importance of communication. I think that communication is at the heart of creating that necessary awareness among each and every one of us here with regards to the problems that have brought us here. Uh, there's the climate change, adaptation, of course, and I'm sure that all of us would like to thank uh, the weather forecasters who are committed, who do more than simply talk about weather, but talk about climate more and more. I'd like to thank them because I think that this communication on the climate be more and more based uh, on no on knowledge, of course, and this knowledge comes to a great extent from space, uh, the knowledge of the evolution of our climate and the environment. And I think that this is supported by your strength represented here as weather forecasters, weather forecasters making that necessary and highly useful communication to the population as a whole. If I speak of education, we can obviously talk of the youth. You play a very important role in that. 
and I would like to thank all of you. I'm here on behalf of Meteo and Clima, the association that I chair. I participated in all of the media workshops over the last 15 years. The first one was organized in 2004. Thank you to Christian for having organized it. And uh, it is indeed thanks to Meteo and Clima and Christian that I am uh, opening today's work to say how important it is that this communication advance, that it become more positive with regards to action, for example. Communication is important not just on the observations and the difficulties that we face and as well as the need for action. You know, in our country, we want to reach carbon neutrality in 2050. We want to adapt to uh, global warming. And so you play an important role here. I would like to thank the CNES, the CNES for uh, welcoming us here. I'd like to thank Philippe Baptiste. I'd like to thank all of those who have contributed to today's organization. Thank you. Thank you to all of you, and I wish you very rich exchanges, and obviously I will try to follow these exchanges as much as possible. Thank you, and have an excellent day.